Dog and Cocktails, presented by Data.World. We're coming to you live from Austin, Texas. It's an honest, no BS, non-salesy conversation about enterprise data management with tasty beverages in hand. I'm Tim Gasper, longtime data nerd, customer guy, product guy, joined by Juan. Hey, everybody. I'm Juan Cicada. I'm the scientist guy here at Data.World, and as always, it's a pleasure middle of the week, end of the day to go take a break, have a drink, chat about data. And today we're going to have an awesome conversation because it's one of my favorite topics, uh, very deep in my kind of just my upbringing of data, which is modeling and about knowledge. And today I am really happy that we have Anna Abramova from SQL DBM. Like you must be following her on LinkedIn because she's really pushing all data modeling on everybody's radar. So Anna, how are you doing? I think you're on mute, Anna. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm doing phenomenal, Juan. How are you? We're doing great. And we're really glad to, to have you here. Uh, we've yeah. been seeing all the SQL DBM and uh, data modeling. So it's just great to you're, have you. You're always chiming in on great topics, starting great conversations. And now we get to hang out and have a cocktail together. And I will have to say that I'm surprised that you're not on some fancy boat or something. So <laughs> I should have. <laughs> Sometimes. Only, only on weekends. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start off. So what are we drinking? What are we toasting for? You go so, first. Uh, yeah, can I? Can I, I know you guys already have your drink. So I have a question. Have you guys, uh, maybe I went overboard. You tell me. I have a question. <laughs> have you ever um, had uh, seen a vending machine with champagne? A vending machine with champagne? I don't think so. Right? Me neither. No. But I saw one. I saw, so like, I know vending machines are so normal and common, but I saw a vending machine with champagne. It was a couple of weeks ago already. It was during Christmas break or something like that. And so I went to the vending machine and I got the champagne bottle. And then I have a, I didn't have a reason or an occasion because it's like a tiny, so this is the one. It's like very <laughs> tiny mini champagne bottle out of a vending machine. And I hadn't have a reason, you know, it's kind of too small for a party or a present. Uh, so I thought, okay, today's the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a unique story. Where was this? Where was this? This was in San Diego, uh, in one of the uh, kind of like br very uh, fancy brunch spots in Little Italy. We have this uh, really nice little neighborhood, uh, and yeah, they give you a token, uh, kind of like this metal piece of metal. Uh, it's it's not cheap. Don't get me wrong, but you then you you buy the the coin. You go to the machine, put the coin into the machine, and then it gives you champagne, like this <laughs> tiny little bottle. So that's what I'm drinking. I'm going to add a splash of. Uh, I'm gonna just open it right now. Yeah, uh, I'm opening uh, uh, it and adding a splash of. Hopefully, I don't uh, get myself wet. Uh, or... <laughs> Watch the last <laughs> You know, living on the edge. You're living on the risky side. All right. Looks like we're good. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to make myself a, a mimosa, gold old, old mimosa. That's perfect. We're having really nice traditional drinks. So you're having a mimosa today from champagne coming from a vending machine. We're just having a good old classic, just whiskey, <laughs> soda, uh, Angel's Envy oh, today. Envy. This is great. So you got your drink prepared now so we can cheers? Uh, working on that. Yep. Just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, got the right. mimosa ready. Cheers, cheers, cheers. <laughs> Oh, wait, hold on. What are we cheering for? Oh, what are we cheering for? <laughs> oh, oh, um, to uh, living on the edge, risking it all, uh, loving life, uh, building businesses, and being happy. Cool. Is that, is that oh, enough? That's perfect. perfect. I can't stop. Cheers. That. Cheers to that. <laughs> all right. So we got our funny warm up question of the day, which is if you could model your home after one famous building or monument, what would it be and why? Mm. Oh. Totally would be non-practical, but the Eiffel Tower, like the mini version of Eiffel Tower, I would live in, in that. That sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, I, so that's a really good answer because I, this, I was not coming up with a good answer, but Paris is one of my favorite cities. So I'm going to steal your answer for that because I think I, whenever I go to Paris, I always take half a day off and I'm good wherever I am. I'm just going to go walk to the Eiffel Tower, just go look at it. And I just, I love staring at it. I don't know. I'm going to steal your answer. It's so it. interesting, right? Um, what would I choose? You know what? I, I don't know that I would ever, ever, ever actually want to live in it, but I've always been super interested in those like shipping container houses. 
and you, oh. you stack them all together and stuff like that. So I don't know. Shipping container uh, houses. Well, the question was a famous building or monument. But okay, oh, okay. No, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it works. <laughs> all right. They're well, actually let's... super yeah. tiny. The shipping containers, they're very tiny. You need a yeah. lot of well, there's a lot of little also these bars now, container bars and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so let's kick it off. All right, Anna, I don't know BS. What's the deal with data modeling? Why are we seeing now this resurgence of it? Let's start with that. Uh, all right, let's get into it. Uh, I, I hear actually a lot of people, I uh, just had a conversation yesterday. We called it, in the conversation, we call it uh, the renaissance of data modeling. So that's, that's I guess, the wave the wave we're riding uh, at SQL DBM. And honestly, I don't think, yes, it is definitely happening again, but I, I know it never went completely away. Um, but hey, I'm in data modeling business, literally. And uh, yeah, it's definitely, it's never gone away. It's here and it's here more than ever. I think, well, at least I, yeah, at least from what I'm seeing, because I, hear the word the phrase data modeling daily 57 <laughs> trillion times like, every email right, every right. email um, 50 percent of slack messages they, they're about that so, so I, I am i am curious to kind of get a little bit of history kind of of, of sql dbm right and, and if i look at kind of the modern data stack and we've had so many conversations about modern data stack and all different tools mo mo data modeling is it one of them? And I'll be honest, like you see all the old school legacy players when it comes to like modeling tools. And I believe that SQL TVM is the only modern data modeling tool. Yeah. I mean, I, you hear about data modeling a little bit in the context of things like DBT and that kind of thing, but it's, it's, you know, things like Fivetran and Snowflake, it's not, it's just not enough a part of the conversation. So what's so. the history behind it? Like how did mm -hmm. SQL even come up? And like, and, and, I mean, for me, it's, that is like the, the tool that I, that I that right. Know. Yeah. That's I'm, I'm glad you're noticing that too, because we, we have it. It's kind of like a problem, a champagne problem. If you would, we we're the only players, so we don't deserve, like you need two or more to deserve a category. So no one puts us in a category. You know, we, we recently became a Google Cloud partner supporting them for uh, AlloyDB for Postgres. And they were like, hey, guys, so which category should we put you in? Are you observability or governance? Where do you want to be? Or and same with uh, Snowflake. They also, uh, I think they put us into data integration uh, just because no one identifies uh, modeling is a separate category. Unfortunately, I'm working on this. Okay, my my big goal, uh, we will have a data modeling category because it's a very important piece of uh, the modern data stack. We kind of, you know, if you go look at uh, customer stories, you would hear like if you ask them about modeling, they would say like, oh yes, we you know we chose Snowflake, uh, we chose Five Trend, and then. If you ask them more, they'll be like, oh, yeah, we're using SQL DBM for, for data modeling. Or you ask them, do you do data modeling? A lot of them would say yes. And uh, it's just kind of like a hidden thing that happens. No one talks about it. Mm -hmm. so, but we, okay. didn't, we didn't invent data modeling. Um, it's been around. All we are doing, like literally all we're doing is just uh, we're more of a fresh approach. Uh, you know, with the cloud uh, choices for cloud data warehouses like Snowflake, the game changer, you want uh, the best of the breed and then you want to surround it with other cloud solutions. So we're just happen to be the, the only one who does it. Uh, there are good traditional tools. Don't get me wrong. They're just not uh, cloud. Like they're not part of that modern story per se. Um, yeah. So. Is that one of the biggest differences of like SQL DBM in terms of like a modern approach to modeling is like a cloud-based approach, that kind of thing? Or are there other things that you would kind of say or, or like, like why, why a modern approach to, to modeling? Why a modern approach to modeling? Um, the reason I think here, well, I'd tell you this. The way we're building the tool is yes, it's a developer tool. Like data modeling is a very complex topic. It's and that's probably why you know going back. That's probably why you don't hear a lot about this. I mean, there's a lot of domain knowledge required to to speak about okay, data database structure design, right? Okay, <laughs> boring people are like okay, I'm out. Um, so what we're doing, which I, I believe we're doing differently, is yes, it's a developer tool, but we're building with a developer, architect, modeler, engineer in mind but also 
with a business person in mind, with that, uh, with the consumer layer, because um, the siloed version of, you know, data modeling is just like this one team that like sits in their, I don't know, silo and works on data models and then just like sends files to the rest of the team. I don't think that's what's happening right now. Every company that comes to us, they're like, well, we're trying to bring the IT and business together. We need a communication tool. We need we need help with uh, communicating our models. You know, hence, you know, we, we want to just send a link. We don't want to send files, help, you know, and no one wants to show them a um, kind of very complex convoluted tool with like, primary key, foreign key, index, or the business person looks at it and they're like, I don't, I don't want to touch this. Yeah, it's easy to be like uninviting. Like, I, like, I don't want to be a part of this, right? But how do you make <laughs> so This is an important point when mm -hmm. we talk about being modern. I think mm -hmm. I traditionally will say, oh, modern means, yeah, it's my, my honest no BS of the modern data stack, whatever is like, it's in the cloud. Yes, that's important. And second has a fancy UI. All the same thing. Honest, and, yes. and, and, and if we look at the modeling tools, I think it, it fits those two things. But you said something very, very key here, which is part of it being modern. It's not just anymore for the technical audience of like, here's your table, and your primary keys, that stuff. It's like we need modern also means we need to be able to combine this audience of the business people, the business users who understand how the business works and capture that knowledge as models and be able to go work. So a modern tool is going to be capture those two audiences. And I think that's something that we that is really lacking right now. I and mean, we do this in the whiteboard, hopefully enough, but you can't <laughs> keep it at the whiteboard. Lucky. I mean, yeah. the first step is do modeling on the whiteboard because a lot of people don't even do that. But mm -hmm. I mean, you got to take it to the next level and you, you want to be able to bring all these different personas together. So I think that's how we should start thinking about modern is we combine all these different personas who need to be working together. Mm -hmm. I, I like that view. Well, and, and so like, why is modeling now becoming such a hot topic? Like why, like why now? I know you've been pushing for it and I've been pushing for it. You've been pushing for it, Anna, but like, why is it becoming such a hot topic now? Well, one of the theories is that it got kind of forgotten <laughs> uh, when when there, the big migration happened, right? Everyone is going to the cloud um, uh, in terms of the storage. Uh, the enterprise data warehouse happens, you know, warehouse, lake house, uh, whatever it is, uh, data swap <laughs> for some. Um, it, yeah, we just, real, we just noticed um, it had like little... Um, you know, slow time. And then once companies and, and people in the industry realized, hey, we're dealing with much more um, data that we thought, like there's more tables than it, your memory can retain. Like the modern, again, enterprise level data landscape, like we're talking about a lot of data assets, like a lot of tables, schemas, columns, uh, it's just too much to look at. And um, if you do this, you, you can survive without modeling. Uh, from what I've learned, you can survive, you'll be fine. It kind of gets you a couple years after, months or years after the fact when you start seeing, okay, problems with performance, costs. Um, and that's where you're like, wait, when you involve a consultant and you're like, so what happened? What's, what's happening? And the consultant was like, well, where's your data model? Like, let us look at the, at the model. And right. you're like, well, uh, which model? Yeah. <laughs> the I'm model? Prioritizing that or what are you talking about? What's a data model? I, I like um, uh, 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 Ken Graziano's uh, comment here that, you know, in the sort of Hadoop days and NoSQL days, you know, things got kind of forgotten. And um, I, I really resonate with that because I think that, you know, as an industry, we really went more into, I think of like two Ps, like pipelines and prep. And like that was like we we're dumping everything into the lake and we're going to build pipelines and we're going to do a lot of prep. And, you know, you got like all the Alterixes and all that kind of stuff. But then it kind of all came full circle to your point on it. Right? And I like that we've you know, we, we weren't modeling the data and then we have to pay those those eventually those debts come due. So what are, I'm curious then what the what are the trends that you are seeing right now in the market when it comes to data modeling? Like are people like asking like, yes, we need that data modeling until we finally need it. Or are you also seeing people's like, no, I don't need it. Like. No, nah, like do people how, see it as a nice to is, have? Is it a nice to have, or are they realizing it's a necessary thing to have? Well, I see it all. <laughs> For some, it's it, nice let's, to let's have. Break and down. Like, let's break yeah, it down. Let's break it down. What are the okay. categories that you're seeing of people of the market? So, 
three, if we talk about market as overall, there are three main categories, uh, even, uh, you know, we're defining for who we're going after, uh, who, are we try, who are we trying to serve, who are we trying to help. There's small, uh, there's startups, smaller companies. They're like 10 people uh, company. They have a couple customers and they're like, hey, we're, we're um, maybe they're digital native. Maybe they're an analytics company. So they their product is um, dependent on data that they, they have in store and provide. Um, and so they, they come to us and they're like, hey, we just need a little bit of help. Uh, we need a uh, data modeling tool to support. Like we're just building our foundation. We need a good modeling tool scalable to support um, our um, the future of our data architecture. Right now we only have half a modeler. We have a, you know, a little bit <laughs> in our snowflake, but we know we'll grow. So it's kind of like for the future, and they come to us, they're like, we need this, just the basics, the minimums, but we need an online version. We need something to collaborative. Ideally, if you integrate with the rest of our tech stack. So it's like the very smart people, um, you know, their roles could be different. Data engineer, modeler, architect, head of data, uh, really depends, but they realize they know from experience from of all of those debts that they would have as a problem down the line. So they're trying to build things the right way from the get-go. We do see a lot of that. Um, and uh, the only trouble with them is they're, well, they don't want to spend the fortune on it. This is why um, Snowflake is a really good choice for them as the uh, solution for their um, uh, data warehouse because um, they pay as you go, right? So they, they don't have to start um paying a lot for for snowflake and then this, they expect the same from us the only problem data modeling tool um hard to introduce the same cost uh structure uh so we're um, we're per user it's 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 different from snowflake i wish it was as easy uh to uh, build them uh build them on uh, consumption but we will love startups we were a startup ourselves one day maybe we still are i know it depends on which book you compare us against so um yeah that's one category Sorry if it was long, but no, uh, no, this, this, and that's this, my... this is very, very concrete. <laughs> yeah. The one, the digital native kind of smaller companies. All right. Yeah. What's yeah. the next? One? Well, then you got the medium size, small and medium size companies. They don't have to be digital native. They could be automotive, insurance, financial, uh, medical, healthcare, pharma, uh, media, streaming, uh, name, you name the industry. That's another thing. Um, People come to us, they're, they say like, hey, what industry are you guys serving? There's no one particular industry. It's a very uh, industry agnostic. And I think overall data um, uh, industry, like our set of tools, like our neighbor solutions, the vendor base, we're all very uh, industry agnostic because it's the same, pro like every industry is solving the same problem. Would it be, I don't know, car company, you know, would it be, Coffee shop, you know, the Starbucks is the Tesla's of, I don't know, whatever uh, the company is, they're dealing with the same type of troubles if they're dealing with the large amounts of uh, customer data. So, um, yeah, we're industry agnostic and they, yeah, the, um, there it's a little bit more mature of a situation. They probably got a cop, you know, they probably got data modelers and data architects, a couple of them, you know, it's maybe 10 to 20 uh, architects. Uh, they have already, you know, data engineering department built out. They're like, they know where they are. Either they're fixing the mistakes of the past and they're like, hey, we just realized uh, we missed a tool when we built this whole thing. Uh, can you help us out, please, <laughs> as soon as possible? <laughs> and um, so that type or or they're they're kind of like, um, you know, maybe they're migrating and they're rebuilding the whole, the whole infrastructure architecture and uh, data modeling is one of the pieces they identified they need. Um, so you see that a lot. Um, yeah, they, uh, like we just said here, th this group is uh, fixing the mistakes of the past. <laughs> yeah, so we, we see that a lot. Uh, we see that a lot. Uh, a lot of functionality. We, I think we're good. I love um, kind of working in this fast-paced environment, and people tell us we're good at listening to the market and anticipating trends. A lot of our functionality that we release is based on what we find, the, the problems uh, we find people have. They're like, well, we, we, we need to reverse engineer our existing database structure and visually show it, 
But even though in Snowflake it's the best practice to define our primary keys and foreign keys, we didn't do it. So can you still help us visually show which table relates to which? So that's like one of the examples why we, um, you know, we introduced a feature to help them uh, kind of fix it after the fact. Um, Interesting. So, yeah. so in, in a way, it's like a, I mean, you're reverse engineering the some sort of the semantics, almost like almost like a sort of lineage, right? These things are are to be connected right here because you and you didn't do it, but you should have done it. But and adding these connections, these foreign keys, primary keys, actually mm -hmm. means stuff. And basically, that's just the mistakes that we did, and we're gonna yeah. You know, yeah. In the class. Yeah. Um, that's the second group. Is there, is there a third group? Uh, third group, uh, the established enterprises, uh, very large organizations, again, industry uh, agnostic, any type of industry. And uh, they probably have, you know, the other day I had, uh, you know, 900 people, IT organization, uh, 150 people, data team, and uh, they're just uh, migrating off of their traditional tooling onto cloud native. And so that's where, and they know they already have, so it's kind of like they already have all of the pieces of the uh, process established. They didn't, they just need to replace the tooling to fit the, the future. Just, you know, so, the on-prem, the downloadable solutions change to the cloud ones. Mm, that's part of this. Yeah, so th this is a really nice categorization of these three. I'm going to go summarize this here. The one is like the digital native, right? I'm just starting now. I want to make sure I start here kind of correctly, building from the building the right things from the ground up. The second one is they're already building on the cloud, but they didn't do it right from the beginning. And now they've realized like, oh, shoot, like we should have done this. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, and that's probably going, there were the folks who were like the first ones getting the, the cloud and doing Hadoop and NoSQL and all that stuff. And then you have the third, which are like the legacy players saying, hey, we need to move to the cloud. We know how to go do data modeling. We already know how to do big yeah. warehouse we need to go migrate to Snowflake. And by the way, I got these legacy modeling tools too. We want to go move to that, use the modern tools for that. I think that's a really interesting, this categorization. I really like this. Uh, the smaller digital native, the oops, let's fix it. Let's, <laughs> let's do this again. Yeah. And then the established players who are like, I'm old, but I'm young. I want to be young. Yeah. And you see the level, I like the, the summary, and you see the level of knowledge and experience kind of uh, progressing. Obviously, the established enterprises don't have much more resources. Uh, they would have a lot of uh, previous knowledge um, pretty much on everything. <laughs> so they know what they're doing. They know uh, and they can kind of as they're um, bringing more people into the team and training them, they're doing it the right way. So there's access to that education, not so much like outside in the industry, but like internally within organization, they, they have ways of passing on the knowledge. And um, I, I really like witnessing that. Uh, you don't see that so much in the younger and smaller companies, like less mature in, in terms of their data journey. Um, but they're, you know, obviously they're learning. Um, they're, uh, yeah, they're just, they're go, they have to go outside to the market because the in-house experience is not always there. Yeah, and I think going to that second group, right, the oops, let's fix it. I mean, here we're seeing uh, Ronald uh, giving this comment, DevOps forget about data modeling. They wonder why their project goes off the rails. And I think it's that. It's like, oh, I'm, I, oh, I need the observability stuff because things are breaking. And like, yeah, well, things are breaking because you didn't think about how things should have been modeled and moved things around and stuff. So I think yeah. uh, if you start investing in the modeling and the knowledge from the beginning, uh, you're really preparing yourself for a lot of the stuff in the future. So I think this is this is why I'm a big proponent of like data modeling knowledge is really sets you that foundation for resilience and not just like, oh, let's here's this quick thing and here's an answer. But it's hard. It yeah, it's but it's hard with the ROI. You know, everything okay. in the market is about ROI. And so yes, just because you know, okay, this is the right way to build things, you know, your your management is going to come to you and, and say, well, Juan, uh, this is a this is very costly. Uh, what's the ROI? And this has been uh, the hardest thing for us in uh, go to market of like um, a customer comes in and says, well, I need to pitch this internally. Can you help me? Do you have a white paper on ROI of data modeling? And I don't like we we there's nothing in the uh, I don't know maybe someone already created but last time I checked there's no uh, research papers on like how much money 
a data modeling practice can save you. Uh, I wish someone went there and done some research and put it online. Um, it's I know it's much easier for other vendors to do this. Like you know, Five Trend, amazing tool. It's again very modern cloud, nice UI, works fantastic with Snowflake. And they are um, I, I study them. I and I, I know that one of their value proposition is saying like, well, by installing Five Trend, you 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 don't have to hire you know a couple positions right like you, it replaces an engineering job and so this is your savings at the very minimum right and then there's much, this is like the base bare bones there's much more to it um, in scalability and repeatability and growing um, but I can't say that data modeling replaces a job or a position or like I can't put a money uh, amount I, on it I feel like this is a very keen observation and I think this is honestly, a call to action yeah. for the whole data industry that like, I think, I mean, anybody you talk to, I'm glad that this is finally becoming reality, right? Everyone you talk to now who knows things about data says, of course, data modeling is very important. Of but course. We don't, yeah. but we, don't have, we don't have the ROI study or the TCO study or whatever that says, oh, if you, companies that do good data modeling make on average 300% more or something yeah. like that, right? So, so, so I'm going to take this as, as an opportunity for, for two things. One is I'm going to plug a talk I'm going to be giving this weekend at Data Day Texas titled Show Me the Money, where I'm going to, uh, which I'm literally going to be not talking about data models specifically, but just in data. But I love data. the name. Yeah. I mean, it's Show Me the Money about this stuff. And uh, spend, so I'll be excited. By the way, if you're going to Data Day Texas in Austin this Saturday, if you use the code Juan Cicada, my name, you get a 20% discount. So you, if for all the folks in Austin or coming to Austin, please use that 20% mm -hmm. off. Uh, so, but second, I, totally, I, I get the point with the ROI. And for me, the, the episode we had last week with Jane was about, we need to have more metaphors. We got into the metaphors to go explain things like a lot of storytelling. And I think for me, the metaphor around data modeling is like, if you're building a house and mm -hmm. you're like, I'm not going to get an architect and go draw this out. I'm just going <laughs> to, yeah. what, what, what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm not going to, you're not going to go architect this stuff. I'm just going to go build that. Like you would never, ever go consider. Just like, give me some wood. Just give me wood. Give me bricks and whatever. <laughs> I'm just going to go build this. And, and I think, I, I mean, yeah. I, we just need to get to that storytelling around that stuff. And, and so and let's assume that I'm, I kind of architect some things and then somebody says, you know what? Um, I don't want that door there anymore, or that wall. I'm going to go tear it down, put it out, other things. Like, wait, there's implications if I'm going to go do this. Like, you yeah. would not build something and say, you know what? Tear that down today, put that other stuff. It's like, you would not do that in construction. I think we need to be able to kind of, I think there's analogies and metaphors we should be. Yeah, and, and to okay. add on to that, um, if it's a small enough house, let's say it's a one story with two rooms uh, in a kitchen, you may build it without the, the architect. You'll, you'll be like, okay, I'm fine. But if you need to grow that, or if you're building a bigger thing, that's when the when, when it seems like, okay, if it's a small thing, we'll just, you know, give me some wood, I'll put it together. Uh, if it's a larger project <laughs> for many more years and that many other internal teams are going to be the consumers, the, the standby readers of that information you created, that's when you get in trouble. Like when it becomes a larger la landscape and scale, which you want it to become large if you're growing. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> so the argument I always tell people is it's about efficiency and resilience. And you just said it yourself. Like, I'm going to build a small thing right now. I need to do it really fast. I don't got time to invest in it. Like, I get that. Yeah. Yeah. For some, yeah. For some, sometimes that's things. all you... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you probably, there are moments that you have to have an ad hoc report right now because something happened and like, we'll just get it done. But the resilience part is I want to be able to build in invest such that if I put one, one I want one plus one to equal three. So yeah. I think <laughs> <it> enable <laughs> you to do that. But it's, it's, it's more of a future uh, thinking. And, 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 and it's more um, the quick report or, or quick, quick fixes are more of a reactive. And when you're early stage and you just need something get done, we've all been there. Yes, you do. This is that. Um, planning and just proactive planning and strategy is a different, this is a, this is what helps you to grow. Like when you're thinking ahead, not just thinking, what is the problem right now I'm solving? Like you're thinking, if I don't do something today, what problems am I going to have in a year? Let's work on that. I think now the issue is that a lot, I mean, you said it yourself right now, it's like people are incentivized more for the reactive quick. 
So, so if, if we go back to the three categories that you said, maybe that first one is not, they kind of see it, but they're that first yeah. video, they're like, I get it, but I got to do this fast stuff. <laughs> I get and, it. But my job, my job description is like, I'm responsible for 3 million other things and uh, data modeling. Yeah. Later. <laughs> well, then it's the second, is it then the second one or the second and third one that they kind of already, they can tell that story. That second and third category of of, of probably of the third the the, the established enterprises with the mature data practices, um, the ones that successfully migrated to the cloud and have been running on it uh, with the best practices, they would yeah they're probably in the best position to tell that story of uh, of the cost benefit analysis, um, yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. Um... On, just before we move off of this value topic around uh, around data modeling, um, what do you find is the biggest trigger for, I think, especially the medium-sized cohort and the large enterprise cohort? Because I think the smaller digital natives, it's more like they know. They, they, they already have like, oh, hey, of course you build the house with the architecture, right? But I think that, especially for medium and enterprise size companies, what do you think is the biggest trigger around value that they're seeing around why they're investing in data modeling? Is it performance? Is it things are too slow and that's the big trigger and the big value of how do we make this faster? Is it more people? People are wasting time. And if we could save them time, that, like, what, do you, what is the biggest value triggers that you're kind of seeing around data modeling? That's such a good question. I never asked anyone from those type of companies. Mm. I would want to find the, yeah, like uh, it's the kind of like, what is the um, life changing event? Like what's, what changed the life before and after that you went, like, what is the question we asked on, on, um, you know, demos um, a lot is like, why are we talking? Like, why are we right. on this demo? Like, why are you looking at this tool? Like what happened internally? Um, I guess we just don't go deep enough in it. I know one example recently, um, again, without company names or, or industry specifics, uh, it was pretty much, you know, hey, I joined this company, I'm uh, responsible for this and this, you know, the data team, big data, Snowflake, um, and uh, the previous uh, team kind of disappeared, and with them, the, you know, the job security part, which is the, the knowledge part, like when you're the only one who knows what was built, and they're like, well, and there's no uh, documentation whatsoever, and we need, um, and then I guess data model kind of serves the documentation part a little bit to um, to the uh, you know data warehousing design. And so for for that case, it's just one, right? I'm not speaking of the industry, just like one specific memory I have. Um, and uh, I remember uh, my uh, team uh, made telling me about this. And yeah, so it's like, well, I have a problem with my job to like do my job now because I don't know what was before. So I desperately need a tool right now to just show me the map. <laughs> Please, I'm lost in the forest. <laughs> they hired me, uh, brought me on a helicopter to the middle of this forest, and I, <laughs> I really need to get out. <laughs> Please, someone give me the map. <laughs> I love that. That's a great, and again, back to knowledge and story. The that's a, knowledge. Th th yeah, I think that's a great story right there. I mean, we... As a community, we need to be able to start packaging these things up and be able to say, like, this is the these are the, the ROI stories or the or, or why I mean, convince ourselves too that these are the reasons why to invest this stuff and then work also with our colleagues. Uh, I mean, outside of the data tech world and our business colleagues and saying, like, we believe this is important and I'm not making this up. It's like I'm actually getting these calls from people, right? So, uh -huh. I, I mean, it's like again, going back to uh, the house example. I need to make a change to this house. I don't have a plan to it. So then what happens? I'm like, how you would you know which wall is okay to break? At the end of the day, you reverse engineer kind of things that happen. It's like, well, if wouldn't, wouldn't, uh, if you had the map right there, life would have been better. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I like the analogy of a map because I think it resonates and it, it kind of creates this broader metaphor because I, I mean, one thing that we see on the catalog side, right. Is that we see people wanting better modeling. We see people wanting better lineage. And we want, we see people wanting better glossaries or documentation, right? And mm -hmm. even though those three things are a little different from each other, they all intersect with like, I need a map. Right. And I, I mean, in a broader sense, to me, data, I might be wrong, tell me, 
data a data model is part of your uh data governance um part of your data catalog and part of your data governance tr uh, strategy um you know apart from like architects and modelers and engineers on that remember when i said about the business side for 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 me for us it is the you know a lot of times you know it will be the data governance team that becomes a secondary party that's very interested uh, because their <laughs> their processes really depend on what happened before, and um, so yeah, I see a data model is a key part of an overall data catalog. Uh, ideally, they should be connected, and it's a key part of the overall strategy, uh, data uh, governance strategy. I, I, I fully I fully agree, and I think I'll, I'll tell you from our experiences, like people want to go catalog. I don't know what data I have, what tables and columns I have, like, yeah, but I also want to be able to extract what that stuff actually means. And the modeling actually gives me that semantics that means like, oh, th th it, it, this is, this table exists for this reason and so forth. And I think right, I have the feeling that we're now getting, the, we're, this pendulum goes back and forth over five, 10 years, goes one side, goes back to the other, right? We were coming from this world of no sequel, right? <laughs> not only sequel, it was no sequel. Like we don't need schemas. It was schemaless, right? I mean, that's the whole point. It was schemaless. We want to move fast and efficient. And now right. we're back to just like, yeah, well, I just dumped a bunch of this shit into this lake. I don't know what the freaking means. And then, <laughs> and then, and then they're like, I don't know what it means. Well, guess what? You didn't have the money. So I think it doesn't gonna... even have a schema. So you can't even look. <laughs> exactly. <at it. laughs> we're going to go move back. And I think now what we, what we got to be careful is, then we're gonna have people saying, "Well, we gotta model everything," and then we're like, "Well, yeah, no. that's <laughs> another another." Like, you're gonna boil the ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, life is not black and white, and so we. That's I, I personally agree. It's too much because the uh, relational modeling could also you like you could go very very deep of like physical model, logical model, conceptual. It's very important. I get it. But if you, if you if you are a startup all, right? and you want to do yeah. everything by the book, you yeah, that's that's not the recommendation. You probably don't have time to think through every layer of it. Uh, it's yeah, and you model every single thing. Uh, yes, I guess there's balance between like do it, but don't overdo it. Come back to it, document more. Uh, yeah, something yeah. like that. So, this is a good segue to this, uh, to this other topic about like education. Like, how are you seeing? Uh, or what, even what are your recommendations for people to start learning this? Oh God, that's a, yeah, that's a big question. Um, a lot of people learn this on the job from, from again, just from what people are telling me. Um, because you, it's not like, maybe you're lucky and you took a database management class back in the day uh, when you were getting education and there was like one class that mentioned database structures and designs and how you know what primary keys foreign keys are and then you forgot about it if, you, if you're lucky and then maybe you didn't have that class um so a lot of people learn this on the job that's why uh the industry education is extremely important I, I i would say there's a lot you know i'm myself learning a lot um every day i mean <laughs> i have books and books on uh, uh this is who's this uh Oh, my friend, our friend, uh, Joe and Matt. Uh, the Dury's? Nice, yeah. Joe and Matt. Yeah. yeah. So we're writing, um, Serge uh, Gershkovich from SQL DBM, he's writing his book on uh, uh, data modeling and Snowflake. Uh, there's no, uh, Kent has, uh, Kent Graziano has uh, documented it all, a lot. He has a blog, articles, uh, uh, hundreds of webinars and talks and, and books also. So you see kind of like bits and pieces of the industry bringing it together and saying like, okay, um, this is not an official <laughs> topic. You can't, you probably don't, not going to go get a master's in databases uh, or anything like that, but this is an important piece of knowledge that we're missing. And you see bits and pieces uh, from, from uh, even technology vendors, which I think we're, we're doing good job in the industry trying to, uh, educational sessions. I see we're switching uh, from web. It's no longer webinars and sales pitches. This is now educational sessions. How to one, two, three. <laughs> um, master classes, workshops. Uh, I see that a lot. And I mean, frankly, um, that's something we are doing ourselves. Like 2023 is a big educational route. Uh, you know, Serge got this book uh, run, 
that he's working on. I mean, I'm more, I'm less of an educator. I'm more of a communicator, but um, uh, I know there's, I mean, we have a lot of great minds here in the industry, um, consulting companies, uh, system integrators, uh, vendors. Uh, we can do this, but yeah, uh, there's no, not, not much. Uh, even internally, I'm, uh, I keep saying if we, our team internally, if we nail data modeling education internally, we can nail it externally. Like if, because if, even bringing people on um, and, to, and them getting familiar with SQL DBM, some, some, they're very talented and smart and we get, we hunt for the best out of the best, but it's a rare piece of knowledge mm -hmm. to find in the market. Yeah, so, yeah I, it all comes back to champagne, right? If you can drink your own champagne, then you can sell it too. Yes, yes. <laughs> so are you, are, you, are, you seeing, are you seeing or do you predict that we'll have like the role of the data modeler or, or whatever you're going to go, whatever you want to go call it, like this will become a more prevalent role or, or will this just be like, I also do data modeling or will data modeling be like their main focus? Yeah, is it a role or a skill? It's a, uh, well, I'm not the best person to give an opinion, but if you ask me, I might be biased, wrong. I think it's becoming more of a skill uh, because, again, if we're working on get, breaking the silos, then everyone needs to know a little bit more about data modeling, like the basics of it, so that everyone is on the same page. So hopefully it becomes more of a skill that's translated from IT over to the business side. Uh, and having the right tools that are business friendly. Like, why does everyone know Excel? Tell me. Because uh, Excel is just so friendly for any type of a user. Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day, and somebody said something very similar to what you just said, and I was thinking to myself, I was like, is Excel really friendly? Well, or did somebody <laughs> send, me an, send me an Excel spreadsheet one time, and I was like, I don't know how to deal with this, and I figured it out, right? But, but at least you know the bare minimum. Right. I, 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 I struggle with Excel. Not my favorite tool. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. Yeah, it's the not minimum as threshold of skill. But, that you yeah, can but have, the, right? the barrier, I guess the barrier for entry is very low. Like Excel helped the, the barrier for entry for some basic, um, I don't know, if is Excel analytics or um, like working with small data sets, the barrier for entry is very low. Um, in data modeling, you know, the end. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, you said it yourself, like, is you don't get education. I mean, if you're lucky, uh, if you take a computer science degree and if you took a database course, you probably took one or two lectures around data modeling in there, right? Uh, I'm seeing Kent here again, his commentary, right? He's, he's a... Uh, He's taught a course, right, for a master's in BI class that teaches data vault modeling. Ten years ago, he's been doing but, it. That's an anomaly, right? That, that's true. Like this, this, those types of situations are kind of courses in university settings. It's not that common. And, and if we look at today, uh, like all master courses and stuff around be, de, becoming a data scientist and data engineering and stuff, like data modeling isn't one of those things. But then at the same time, we're like complaining why this thing breaks and stuff. Well, bro, well, we put the models around. Right. And I'll be honest with you, data modeling is not this, like, um, it's not the sexiest topic out there. It's not the sexiest job. Like, oh, I'm a data-based modeler. Uh, you know, it's like, unfortunately, we- How do we I, make it cool? How do we make it cool? How, how do we, because it, we're I setting know, it, it in the foundation. I mean, you want to create this I as a category. You have to call it a data super model. <laughs> I think it is cool. That was a bad I, joke. I'm sorry. Dad <laughs> joke. Dad joke. <laughs> uh, uh, I think it is cool uh, because knowledge knowledge is sexy. So uh, data modeling is knowledge. So here I said it. Uh, that's why I was going with, I got busy and forgot, but I was going with the hashtag uh, make data modeling sexy. Uh, so that was the kind of like motto of SQL DBM in 2022. And uh, I think we've got some success with it. And it, yeah, but the problem is again, the, the, the barrier for entry, you know, if you go out to a networking event or, or speak with, I don't know, some, someone from the industry or not, and they ask me, oh, Anna, what, what do you do? And I'll usually look at them and I'm like, well, how familiar are you with cloud data warehouses? Or have you heard of database modeling and design? 
<laughs> at that moment, you could see the regret in people's eyes. They're like, why did I ask this? Because they got themselves in a situation where I just said like 10 words. They only understood one of them. <laughs> and they're like, well, like, so, so, and that's why it's not sexy because it's, it's just, um, there's a lot of the main knowledge required to in basics to like under like to be on the same level to to sustain a conversation and so to me that's a problem like that's why it's not sexy it's, it's not sexy because it's complex it's too smart <laughs> i don't know <laughs> well i mean th th again ken is doing great giving us great comments here like a tile building you need a good foundation to stand the test of time data modeling is needed for that foundation in the data world i a thousand percent agree with this. And I think this is kind I'm of the take a screenshot of that. This is the mindset that we need to have. And it goes back into being efficient, being resilient. If your goal is to build just a really small uh, two bedroom house with wood, then yeah, you don't need to go build. Yeah, much you're fine. Yeah. You're, you're, but if yeah. you're thinking about, about uh, being around for a long time, uh, you want to be the giant and, and the, the resilience, and, right? As you were saying, resilience, what I talk about, there's this balance between efficiency and resilience. And I think it, it, it's not, it's not one or the other, right? It's finding a the balance. There's some things we need to be very fast about. And, and I think data modeling, investing data modeling is about building that resilient foundation. And sadly, I, sadly, we're not incentivized to be resilient. I go, my example always is the Suez canal is very, very efficient, but one boat goes like <laughs> a little bit and the entire economy of the world. My favorite boom. meme. Yes. So, well, look, and I told you we're, going here so fast on time this is a uh, uh, we can keep talking about this this is my favorite topic about data modeling but i think it's time to go to our lightning round which is presented by data.world and i'm going to kick it off first question go for it all right so i'm a big proponent of this role that i call the knowledge scientist or the knowledge engineer which is this translator right between the data people and, and the business people do you see this becoming like a role a title Yes, that's a good, uh, and it's very rare to meet in the wild for now. All right, let's work together to make this not rare. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yes. I'm in. I'm All in. Right. It sounds like a kick ass role. All right, a very sexy role. We'll make sexy role. Yeah. That's a sexy role. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you go, All Tim. Right, next. Um, should every data engineer learn data modeling? I'm biased. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> I would say so. If you're a data engineer who's listening, how well do you think you know data modeling? Yeah, and thoughts. then tell them, but, but where do, they're like, well, I'm willing to learn, where do I go? That's what we need to help out. That's with. another thing that needs to be, that needs to be yeah. fixed. Yeah. This is, this is, this is the honest, no BS conversation. Like this is, we need to get the community yeah. who's listening. Is like, we need to have more of this education and more of the, the, this is all community that we're doing here. And I'm really glad that you guys are getting a book out. I mean, we need yeah. more of these modern books. Yeah, we're building Academy also, uh, our own, uh, I mean, obviously it's for tool onboarding, but um, hope the hope is to be able to cover more general topics. Like forget the tool, like just please learn the basics. We'll help. Uh, but it is, it's not easy. And uh, we're not, uh, you know, we're still a software tool and we want to stick to that niche because that's how we can best support, but a little bit on the, um educational side hopefully yeah hopefully we'll start that well then that leads us to our next question which is can we make data modeling easy yes we can we can it's a way uh which we can make it easy we can make it cool we can make it sexy we can make it lightweight in terms of tooling we can make it more automated uh more collaborative yes absolutely we can we should we are doing it that's another topic we didn't touch about, like collaboration, being agile, data modeling. That's another another. Topic. <laughs> that's yeah. a lot. That's a lot of conversation. Yeah, modeling is often thought of as a little bit more of a. I create my model. Oh, and top yeah, down. And I, and just me. I'm the one who knows. And then I'm gonna print it out on a really big piece of paper and put it on the wall. <laughs> that's cool to do. Um, yeah, but how do you make it more collaborative? Uh, all right. So last question for you. Lightning round. Today, data modeling is often more strongly connected to the world of the data warehouse. I think just conceptually, people tend to connect the two a lot. Do you see streaming or other modalities becoming a really major focus of modeling as we go forward? Ooh. I, yeah. Why not? Why not? With time. Yes, with time. Lots to figure out there. <laughs> yes. Conceptually sounds fantastic. 
practically, yeah, I did some <laughs> research. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, I mean, there's already a big uphill kind of uh, journey to be taken just on cloud data warehouses. So let's get that one first. Yeah, let's let's do, let's, <laughs> let's get one, at a, time. one yeah. at a time. All right. Well, takeaway time. TTT Tim, take us away with your takeaways. All right. Uh, Anna, you said that uh, really yourselves at SQL DBMS and also the broader industry, the data industry, we really see ourselves going through what feels like a renaissance of data modeling. Um, and the reality is it's never gone away. It's certainly never gone away for your company because you've been <laughs> talking about data modeling every day. Uh, but uh, yeah, one of the challenges is that it, you know, in the modern data stack and the way that we think about the modern data community, it's not really a category, right? And yeah. so, um, you know, it, it stinks to be so category centric, but, you know, when you have these labels, then it starts to be easy to say, oh, well, I, we do, we have this box, so we don't have that box. Maybe you need that box, right? Maybe you need some data modeling. So, you know, it needs to become a data category. And that was one of the missions that you mentioned that, uh, that you're really focused on. Um, and, um, you know, really data modeling kind of has been like, why, why is it now a renaissance? That means before it was the dark ages, right? So why was there a dark age? We you talked a little bit about like the data swamp, the data lake, just there's this trend that kind of move, moved away from data modeling being the focus. Uh, but then all this data accumulated and we got to figure it all out and, you know, kind of enter, enter modern data modeling. Right. Uh, so we asked you, like, what is modern modeling? And you mentioned that, well, first of all, like modeling is is complicated. It tends to be more technical. And so modern modeling really is thinking about sort of, you know, first of all, what is modern data tooling? Right. It's it's usually mm -hmm. in the cloud. It's a better user experience. Um, you know, sometimes it's more affordable, right? So these are some of the things that are oriented around sort of modern tooling. Um, but also you mentioned that we need to bridge the sort of developer, engineer, technical person and the business person. Uh, and that's an important part of, of modern modeling, which I thought was very important. Uh, and then you talked about three sort of key groups that are really, you know, leaning into modeling, data modeling and modern data modeling. You mentioned the smaller sort of digital native companies. They might be analytics companies. You know, they might be companies where data is a really important part of their business value that they provide. Uh, and these folks, you know, they're, they want to build something scalable. They want to build something smart. They usually have smart people. Uh, and, you know, they probably don't have enough modeling people. They can't throw 10 architects at something, right? Yeah. And so they want to take the smart approach, a technology and automated oriented approach. And, you know, modeling early and often is a way that they can, they can achieve that scalability. Um, the next group is like these medium sized companies, uh, industry, uh, usually specific companies. And, and we kind of all decided that they're, they're sort of the oops, let's fix the sins of the past companies, right? Uh, so they went down a path, they probably weren't as digital native, right, or aren't a digital native, and they're realizing that they need to adopt these scalable, better modeling practices to keep up with, you know, their digital native peers, and to in general, just be efficient, be effective, right? Um, and then finally, are these established enterprises, uh, and they may have been doing data modeling, and maybe it's already a part of their sort of what they do, um, but they're looking to, you know, continue to lean into that, do that more scalably, do that more effectively. So you have sort of these three nice, nice cohorts here of, of different shapes and sizes trying to address this. So I think that's a nice way to break it down. Um, what about you, Juan? Uh, what, what are your big couple more things? One, my favorite topic right now, ROI, show me the money. It's hard with data modeling, right? Because I mean, it's like the right thing to do, but it is costly. So we like we struggle around kind of explain what is the ROI by data modeling. I think we talk we need more strat stories and analogies around this stuff. I mean, uh, we need to make it uh, tell better stories, right? We were talking about how the architect and the plan you're talking about. It's like, I, I get dropped in the middle of the forest. I need to go do my job. Like, show me the map. I'm lost about this. We need this map. And if you think about it, if you're doing something small, think following that the house analogy, if you're doing just a small house, then yeah, you probably don't need it. But if you're doing a larger project, which is going to grow, that's where you really need that, 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 that strong foundation with modeling comes in. If you're doing small, you're just being reactive. It's different if you're like thinking big and you're being proactive because it's going to help you to grow. But at the same time, you need to be careful about like, what is that balance? You don't want to go and model everything. The swindling goes back and forth. So I think finally, the big picture here of ROI is balancing this efficiency and resilience. Uh, so this is something that goes addresses the incentives. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, it's education, right? 
many people learn data modeling on the job. And unfortunately, it's really hard to go learn out there. There's not enough, you know, learn this in, in if you're taking computer courses, there's not a many uh, modeling courses around there. There's not many books. I think there's probably old school books that yeah. frankly, you the, probably can't even buy the them. Data Warehouse Toolkit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, that. Exactly yeah. like that. We need more modern books around that. Really excited that Search mm -hmm. from SQL DBM is writing a book like that. We need more of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Interesting that you're seeing the vendors like move from webinars, like education, master classes. I think that's a great approach around that too. And finally, we need to make data modeling sexy. Maybe this title around knowledge, the knowledge engineer, the knowledge scientist. That may be a way yeah, to- The translator. Yeah. The translator role. Uh, how did we do? Anything we missed on takeaways? You did a fantastic job. I uh, This is like an article, a piece of art in itself. So thank you. I, <laughs> I thought I can't communicate everything right here. <laughs> the story, but sound, like this is a perfect story that they needed to be told. So thank you for... Well, we're for just the... repeating what you said. So thank <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, was thank, I there? thank you. And, and all while drinking a mimosa. Right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we're going to throw it back to you. Three questions. What's your advice it's about data, about life? Second, who should we invite next? And third, what resources do you follow? Uh, my advice, I don't want to be obvious, so I'm not going to say the obvious thing that hopefully everyone got out of this conversation. You need to do the non-sexy thing. Uh, I'll say um, advice, um, keep learning. Yeah, keep uh, educating yourself. Um, any job, any topic, any time, any point in your career or life. Uh, keep learning. Well, the second one was... Who should we invite next? Uh, who should invite next? Um, there's lots of... Someone... Are you going to invite them? Or, or is we it reach much? out. We reach yeah. out to folks. I mean, I mean, uh, I, I, just... if you know them, then you, you should foster the introduction. So. Uh, I just uh, have... Three really cool uh, female leader leaders in data: uh, Veronica Durgin from um, SACS. Uh, she's a Snowflake superhero. I don't know if you had her. Probably not. She is. Uh, I'm already talking, and we are scheduling her. She will be a guest. Yes, please, because she's amazing at that storytelling. And like, if you take, uh, I think what what is she? VP of uh, data. I'm not sure, uh, but. She's amazing at know, like having that technical knowledge and background and then communicating the story for in business terms. So please, yes, uh, yes, fantastic. Uh, or any other, um, yeah, there's um, super, Snowflake superheroes are usually good at uh, creating content. Um, and what was the third question? Sorry. I'm what, what resources do you follow? People, uh, resources. blogs, conferences, where are you going? To, I mean... Oh, oh, yes. I follow, I go everywhere uh, uh, where I can. Um, obviously, oh, going to Snowflake Summit uh, in June, Vegas. I'll probably see you guys there. Yep. Um, going to, oh, we're going to this um, in Switzerland, um, um, skiing and data. Um, this is in March with That's Leading Edge cool. IT uh, in somewhere in Alps. Sounds fantastic um in terms of skiing and learning but uh, resources i follow um started uh, listening to you guys' podcast amazing uh, for any level like i recommended internal education is important so i recommended some of the pieces um, of the podcast to some of the team members love love the stuff thank you thank appreciate you. that so Rate and review us please <laughs> <laughs> oh i will i will um yeah, books. Yeah, as I said, I'm reading not always full book, right? Maybe you just start a book. Uh, you know, maybe you watch a couple of videos, talk. To, honestly, talk to people. People are the the the, the largest and best uh, knowledge containers out there, and people are amazing. They can answer questions, tell you stories, put metaphors, and and sometimes hold your hand. So yeah, my biggest resource: people around me, smart people around me. Love that. Well, and then before we say goodbye, just quick reminders. Uh, again, this Saturday, I'll be at Data Day Texas, 20% uh, discount code using my name, Wants a Kid. I'll be giving that talk. Show me the money. They're going to be there. A lot of our former guests will be there. So Shamak Digani is going to be there. Joe Rice with Matt Housley. Uh, we have, uh, I think, Dave McComb, Chad Sanderson. So many guests. It's going to be a fantastic event. Uh, so if you're in Austin or coming to Austin, uh, use that code, Wants a Kid. Next week, we have Malcolm Hawker. From Prophecy, we're going to be chatting about, is MDM dead? It's going to be a good one. 
to be very controversial. Very and provocative. That, <laughs> Anna, thank you so much. And as always, thanks to our world who lets us do this every Wednesday. Have cocktails and chat with cool people. Anna, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers again.